Hello and welcome to the Hales Owen Apostolic Church. Apostolic meaning what God says, not what man thinks. Please enjoy this teaching and if you want more, visit the website at halesowenapostolicchurch.org. Thank you. The sermon this morning is going to be based on the scripture we had in the, in the welcome. Um, you know, the spirit of the Lord um, is upon me. Uh, it is an incredible scripture to start anything with, you know, because, you know, that's us today. The spirit of the Lord is upon us. And so, you know, we can, we can now understand when Jesus said that, that he, he did exactly the same as us. And, you know, when he said, he was telling all those people, you know, about, the, you know, that today this spirit is, for, you know, this, sorry, this, this, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. And so they knew this was going to be the Messiah. They knew this was going to be the, the, the savior of Israel. And yet he's telling them right there and then, this is it incredible but the jews would have known the scripture they know that they, they, they knew they were always praying for the messiah to come and so and, and release their jews from the hardship they had you know and it was under the rule of the romans and of course they had governors and one of the one of the most profound hardships they had was the taxation that the Romans gave every country they, um, they took over. And you know, so it was, they ruled by force, they were oppressive, uh, they wouldn't let any, any disorder come, they used force at everything. And of course, we, we know what they did to, to Jesus, the scourgings, and, and we see that they nailed people to cross, anyone that, that, anyone that went against them, that was their, their punishment. Um, for, go, for going against him. So it was um, a captivity. These people were in prison in their, in their own country and Jesus had come to, to, to release them from all of, 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 of what they were going through. But of course, he would release them from the oppression, but he didn't come to destroy the Romans. That's what the Jews thought it would come. And we know because of this spirit that God came to bring a spiritual kingdom to them all. So these, this beautiful passage should have been glorious in their ears. The anointed one, you know, um, this is the Messiah, you know, this is it, this is it, you know, and he was filled with that, that same spirit that God fills us with. Isn't, isn't that incredible? You know, when we received the Spirit, it was the same Spirit. And this was the Messiah in that Spirit. And that's what he was telling us. You know, and that, 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 that Spirit is, is, you know, it's the Spirit of God that dwelt in Jesus. He was the only way that Jesus could operate like a man and do the things that he did. We, you know, because without that Spirit, and as God, God tells us, it's the power of God within us and so we sometimes forget this that it's that same spirit that he gave jesus to do his ministry is exactly the same spirit he's given us to be able to live the same life that god um, wants for us and you know god anointed this man jesus and um, you know why because he needed that power he needed someone someone just to be able for him to use to give the, the messages and to and of course to show the people who the Messiah was and Jesus did that and we've done that through the Gospels uh, many times and you know what was Jesus's job to do we know in the in the in the um, New Testament he tells us right from the beginning I've come to seek and save the lost and yet in this passage it really does tell us you know and so jesus had to receive the spirit to be our example he had to be baptized by john the baptist for our example it's exactly the same he's showing us 
he's had to do the same things that we have to do for God um, to actually use us. And it's amazing. And, you know, that's all he came for was to preach this gospel to the poor, to preach it to the, to heal the brokenhearted, to, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind. And we know that the healing was a, a big part of his, 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 um, his ministry. But of course, the greatest healing for us is, 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 is our soul. And so it's beautiful that he showed us this, this, this new way of life with God. And, you know, and that's what happened to us the day that we received the Holy Spirit. He, he anointed us and we were set free to begin to learn to live this new life in the Spirit with Jesus Christ. A new creation is going to come out of us being transformed, you know, from, from what we were to what God knows we can be if we would just follow him. So this is the promise to all that God will call. And he has called every man to be taken out of this prison, this captivity, to open the eyes of the blind, because we know the scripture tells us, you know, Satan has blinded the eyes of those people so they won't believe. It's so important. And of course, to do all those things he's asked to do, that plan of salvation, we know, because why? Because he wants to set us free. He wants to set us free of all the things that, that are going on in our life. I mean, every day there's something else that begins to play on our minds and, and begins to take us away from God without fail. So it is so important that we understand that God came. And he wanted to change us from the inside. And we all know what it is. He, he wants us to give us, be the same as Jesus. And I know we'll never be the same, but he, he wants to get us into that mode, into that transformed life, so we can show the same characteristics of Jesus that he was showing the world. Why? Because that's God. That's God. He, he's showing what God is. And we know that that fruit of the spirit that he wants to grow in us is the love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. You know, and, it, and it's important that we look at it because you know, that's what he wants for us. He, he wants to give us, you know, continue to work with each one of us. So he produces more fruit of the spirit. And those fruit of the Spirit, when we receive more of those, make us stronger Christians to be able to do the work of the ministry. And also, when, we, when we've got this, when we're strengthened in faith and strengthened in all these things, it allows us to, to, to look at the world and know that we can step out of where we are and step in to where Jesus wants us to be. And of course, the, the exciting thing for us is, you know, is, 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 little, is little pieces of, of scripture which, which turns around and says about like this one, uh, about the fruit of the spirit, um, against these, there is no law. So we know in the physical, there's laws that, that you know, gravity and everything else that, you know, that, 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 that dictates the way that this world is. And yet, having these fruits, there's no law. You can have as much as you desire. And when you think you've had it all, there's more. Why? There's no law against it. It just continues. So it's really beautiful, isn't it? That God would want to do this with each one of us. No matter who you are, no matter where you've come from or anything else, it's, it's absolutely um, wonderful. And because sometimes we can't see that within ourselves, but God can. And God gives us these things so we'd know. And you know, it's that beautiful thing about all the scriptures about, you know, you know, cast out demons and all this and, and all those things. And yet, um, you know, it turns to that, 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 that chapter in Corinthians of love. And it's really beautiful because it is. It's about that love that he wants to produce the most. Because when we can love God 
with all of our heart, mind and soul and strength, will be strengthened. And when we can continue to love others, and others that we shouldn't, you know, in our flesh don't want to love, but when we've got that. And the last one, to love ourselves. And it's, that's, this is no boastful love. It's, it's a humble love to say, I am who I am. And when we know we're doing the things of Christ, it enables us to love ourselves better. Amen. That's really important um, because, you know, most of us are our worst own judges. We don't need to look at anyone else. Um, but it's important that we have that love. So it is beautiful. It's beautiful to see that this is what God wants to put in us, you know. And it's not a simple love in some respects for us because when God uses those words, uh, he wants us to love him with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. That's amazing, isn't it? To love him, whatever's going on, to love him, to worship him and praise him, no matter what's going on. We know each one of us have these, have these battles and one of the days we're going to love our life with Jesus Christ. In this world, it's quite simple, isn't it? It's flesh or spirit, spirit or flesh. And it's there, it's there all the time. But, you know, it really doesn't matter sometimes because if we're in flesh or spirit, if the laborer for God will always do the things for God, you know, that at least we'll get some rewards for what we do, no matter how little we do or no matter how much. Don't forget, some are called to do a lot and some are called to do a little. Some can only do a little and some who can do a lot. So please don't punish yourself. Just have a look at what you can do and let the Lord help you with what you have. So important. Okay. Let's, let's, I'm going to have a little look um, first at, at when Jesus first called the disciples to see what happened to them as regards to their flesh thinking and what happened in the spirit. And I'm doing this today so, to, show, to show each one of us that there is there's something more. There's always something more God can do. You know, we can never be stuck with anything. There's always something. There's always a way out. There's always something else that Jesus can do for each, for each one of us. So I'm going to read from uh, Luke, um, Luke chapter 5, and I'm going to start um, at verse 1. So it was as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God, that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret, and saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. But look what he said. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when he had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boats, come help us. And they came and filled both boats. So they began to sink when Simon Peter saw it. He fell down at, the, at Jesus' knees saying, depart from me, for I am a sinful man. Isn't it incredible? Isn't that incredible? It just shows us, doesn't it, the difference of what God would want to do with people compared to what they think. So when we're being taught of God and become more mature. And don't forget, the, mo the more we go on, the more mature we will become. We should see more. We should see more that's happening within the kingdom and what's happening within our lives and the church upon this earth. But it should also, it should also strengthen us to make sure, more sure, 
of our walk with God and that we will meet Jesus Christ in the clouds when he comes back. So it's important. So these kind of things, you know, we read them in, in, you know, in the scripture. Can we believe that God can use these principles in our lives today? Well, he can. It's just the same for us today. When we become like these born again Christians, we become these born again Christians, we have been begun a new life with the Spirit with God. And just like Jesus did, isn't that marvelous? Us, yet again, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you've done, whatever you're doing, once we repent, baptized in water, name of Jesus Christ, filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, just as everyone who received the Spirit in the Bible. So we then become the anointed ones for today. This generation, for this people of this generation, to the people who you meet at any time, in any place, wherever they are. Amen. You see, whatever Jesus did upon this earth, everything we needed to know was recorded for our benefit today. And of course, everyone throughout the New Testament age can read this, study it, see what it's got for them and give us encouragement no matter where we are. For God is no respecter of persons. This is not for the, you know, the, uh, oh, he's better at this and she's better at that. And no, it's for everyone. See, we've got to keep telling us it's not what we've got. It's not who we think we are. It's not our education. It's not our successes. It's not our failures. It's not our sin, what we've done. He's the gospel. He's the good news. And he tells us to He'll forgive us and teach us and guide us and lead us and empower us to be his witnesses, to do the work of the ministry, to help, to love, to show, to tell, to pray for people wherever we go. And we're doing it because we're in place of Jesus. We're, we might be the only person that will ever encounter someone that has Jesus with them. So it's important that we look at ourselves very differently. That we, I, am in the place of Jesus to tell these people about him. Incredible. So he's inside us. And he, he did that so he could Heal the inside of us first and allow us to be bold and free to let what's inside of us out to others through our voice and also, you know, our actions and attitudes and stuff like that. But the main thing is our voice. But don't forget, the voice has got to match up with the face as well. You can't say how happy you are and look miserable or you can't say how joyful you are and look miserable. So it's really important that we understand we've got to be so absolutely joyful that we know we're saved and we can call that spirit into our lives and upon our lives at any time so it, it's beautiful look i'm just the same as you i know in this world you know the flesh makes our life very very difficult sometimes and of course this this this, this head makes it this head makes it worse as well, what we, what we think. So it's important that we continue to understand the scriptures are here to free us. And that's why God gave us his word. It's there for anyone, no matter which situation it is, to pull out of that scripture or to pull out of our memory, wherever it is, or what we've written and enable God to give us that comfort, that encouragement, that direction from his word. And that's why, you know, that's why, that's why he simply says, come, follow me. 
come come to me all those that are heavy burden you know and and and, and cast your burdens upon me for my yoke is light and easy you see he sees our life and you know that if we just do that, if we just cast our burdens upon him of our feelings and all the things and all the wrong things and, and the, everything around us upon him, you know, I can't change the world. You know, but when I look at the things that are wrong, I, I can't say to him, you know, I'm going to change it. It's too much. It's too much to hold. And so, you know, we've got to cast these things upon him especially if we can't handle what's happening it's so important and also he gave us a church to share with so we can support those um, who are in who are in need why he doesn't want us to slip back into captivity he doesn't want us to be trapped in what we think we ought to be doing but what he wants us to do Come, I'll give you a more abundant life. You know, it is a life of freedom, of joy and peace. He says that the kingdom of God is not righteous, is, is not flesh and blood. It's righteousness, joy and peace in the Holy Ghost. And so it is this spiritual life that he's called us to so he can pour into us his spirit, pour into us his word, pour into us his love and those things that he wants for us. So we, we can just share them, share them. You know, my heart is to, to share as much as I possibly can with anyone, anytime, anywhere, with what God has given me. And I know, I know for some of you, some of the things are not easy, but that's when we work together to train to teach to correct to instruct to make sure that each one of us grow in faith and strength and not just struggle because we don't know amen it's important <laughs> you know and the most beautiful thing about god is that whatever we do um, even even praying together you know he blesses even being together and talking about him, he blesses. He loves it. He loves it. We're, we're with him. He's there. You know, so it, 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 I can just see him getting excited, you know, that just that we, we met, you know, and, you know, it, you know, discussed our problems and things like that. But then we prayed and we brought the word of God in and, you know, and hugged one another and stuff like that. See, that, that, that you can see he, he loves it because you, you feel the presence of God in those situations. You know, I, 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 met, I met a chap on Friday and we, you know, we got over all the, you know, the little things about chatting and everything and, um, you know, and things were being said. And, and then all of a sudden, um, this chap said one thing. Well, I tell you what. The Holy Ghost came in, into our presence and we just began to pray and, you know, and then we prayed for a good while in tongues and things were coming and things were being said in the spirit, you know, that's what God wants us to be like. <laughs> and when he does that, he, he does give us that favor that, 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 that God wants, you know, whether you, you know, whether you, whatever we want to call it, God is a God that, wants to daily load us with benefits. I love that scripture. Um, it was an old old preacher in Bilston. I think he said it in every every lesson, didn't he? Um, you know, he, he, you know, God wants us to load us with benefits daily. Like you know, it's beautiful. So the Lord really does want us to give us this this new way of life with Him. You know, and, and he, act, he actually calls us, doesn't he, you, you know, a new creation. Isn't that beautiful? But it's not a new creation in our flesh, of course. It's us to be more spiritual, getting ready um, for the spiritual kingdom that we will go into. God himself is trying to teach us the right way of living for him. Um, he tells us to forget the past and push forward to the high calling of God in, um, I think it's Philippians 4. And you know, there's no higher calling than being with God. No matter what anyone would like to say, we're all called to that higher calling. And no higher calling to be one of God's 
um, special people. The uh, King James calls us peculiar, uh, but it does mean special. I know some of us have a very different description of peculiar, um, do you know, but once I've seen it and I, I you know, and I put the word upon myself, you know, said, yes, Mark, you are peculiar, you know, but of course, um, it's not the flesh way that we look at it. It's God's way of saying that we're incredibly special. Why? Because we're different. We're different from the worldly people. And that's why the people would use that, that, that worldly word peculiar to say that we're strange or different or <laughs> even stupid sometimes that some of us, some, some of us call us. So it really, it really is important that, that we see this. But you know, let me just tell you something. I'm going back to the to the fishermen, to when he first called them. So we can see from that scripture um, that firstly, they were fishermen. And what they knew the best was to go out in a boat and cast nets into the sea and catch fish, you know, and some to eat, but most of them and their job was to catch it and sell to others so they can live the, the life that we all have to do because we all have to have to go to work that's the reason for work to go to to, to you know to provide for our families etc cetera, etc cetera, to earn money and pay our bills pay our way in effect but here jesus gave them a miracle didn't he they caught no fish and they toiled all night because that tells us that's the time when they had to fish. That's the time they knew they would get the fish um, closer to the surface because um, that's what happened. You know, the night they come up in the day when the heat comes, they go further, further down into the into the cool. That's you know, that's what actually happens there. So it was really strange, very different, very peculiar um, for Jesus to tell them, go out now. And so, and, and we know. And so what did he tell them to do? He, he also told them to do something very different as well. He said, go out into the deep. So that also tells us they would have gone to catch the fish in more shallow waters. So two things already, day and the deep. And we know that the, the story of that incredible number of fish, so much that the nets were breaking and the the other people had to come and help them and get the fish. And then both boats were, were sinking then. That's amazing. But for Simon, straight away, he knew who this man was. And his statement, depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O oh Lord. Isn't that incredible? Um, we've seen that happen. He knew it was just totally against what he thought and what he'd been trained for and everything else. And yet God provided what they needed. Verse 9 says in, in Luke, For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will be, you will catch men, fishers of men. So when they had brought their boats to land, they forsook all and followed them, followed him. Isn't that beautiful? Straight away, they were given their ministry immediately on that day. From now on, you will catch men. And they followed him. What was it they seen? What was it? Your miracle, yes. But they must have seen something. What was it? His voice? Was it the way he was? You know, he wasn't dressed fancy. You know, he, 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 you know, he said his visage was just sort of like normal. And so it, it's incredible. You see, the fisherman knew straight away what they had to do. God had given the, Jesus had given their, their ministry and, and they've been doing it, you know, and they, they've been fishing um, for, for, for their lives. That was, that was their job. And, you know, but Jesus told them to do something 
they knew wouldn't work. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> In the natural, they knew it wouldn't work. Um, you know, and the miracle. And that's the same for us, doing things that we say that we know doesn't work or whatever it is. We will get the help from God and get the catch that we are looking for. It's because of the scriptures that we know, you know, where our problems are sometimes as well. Um, and, you know, Jesus turned around and he said, he'll transform us by the renewing of our minds. And our minds do need to be renewed daily. You know, we can, we can sit and contemplate, and meditate and think. Uh, we know exactly what God wants to do. Um, yet, and that's difficult because God got a different job for lots of people at lots of times, lots of other people. So it's important that we understand that we have a job to do. God knows us. He knows what we can do. He knows what we can't do. And he hasn't called anyone to do a job that they cannot do. What did they have to do? They had to do something completely different for them to reap the rewards of getting a catch of fish to do their job properly. And not only that, but it was overflowing. Isn't that scripture? You know, you, you, you'll get, you know, you, you, you'll be filled, overflowing, you know, it's just, that's just God. He doesn't, you know, he wants to do that with each one of us, you know, overflowing, um, you know. And, but what did, what did he really tell me? To he said, launch out. Launch out, he said, push out from the safety of the shore. Go where it's deep, somewhere you've not been, somewhere different, someone different. Fishing is a good subject, isn't it, to have the analogy of witnessing. If you fish where the fish are not catching, why are you fishing there? It's important. Have you tried a different area? Have you tried a different bait? Uh, we have a different way, a different approach, um, different words, alternative attitude, letting the spirit work through us and not trying to force it through our own ways of doing things. It's important that we begin to see this. It's not what we are. It's that when that spirit comes, it's completely different. You, you, you don't have to think about what you're going to say. You don't have to try and work everyone out. God works it out. But you know, also, us who know the word, we know every single person's got a problem. There's nobody free of, of problems. And when they don't know the Lord, you know. Full stop. So it's finding that way of being able to speak to them. Don't forget no matter what he says, you know, Jesus might want us to go deep, but he might want us to try something else. You know, we might want us to work together. You know, we've got to stop thinking, this is it, I've done this and that's it, finished. We can't do that. Listen, we've got to begin to learn to do this in the spirit. Galatians 6, 7 to 10 says this, do not be deceived, God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life. Let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Therefore, as we have opportunity let us do good to all, especially to those of the household of faith. Incredible. You know, this is, this is him telling us, you know, come on, try. If you don't understand, ask for help. How do we do this, you know? And, it, and it's quite simple, just, you know, for me. And, you know, it's, I had to learn to trust the Lord, you know. People say, oh, well, it's all right for you. Well, no, it wasn't all right for me. I was, I, you know, I was just like anyone else, but probably worse because I was already in business and, and everything was in a box and organized and time managed and everything else like that. You know, and so oh, that, that's me trying to fit God into what I believe, you know, life's about, you know. And so for, for me, I, I believe that one of the reasons he first took me abroad is that I didn't have that comfort. I didn't know where I was going. 
who I was meeting. I couldn't really plan anything except read the word and pray and, you know, and just be prepared and just let God use me. And, you know, and it, it wasn't until, I promise you, it wasn't until years later that I understood, you know, what God had just done in my life. Just, you know, I came up, that's great. Make your plans, make you get the vision, do that. You know, you've got to work at it. I said, but when it's my turn, let me speak through you. How do you think? And you'll ask some questions and you'll get some answers, but don't worry. I'll help you. You know, and it, it, it's, it's that spiritual kingdom that you know, we have got to remember every time we see someone. It's not your battle, it's a spiritual battle. And if they don't know the Lord and not been filled with the spirit, they won't understand spiritual things. Well, find the key, help them with it. Love them, no matter how they treat you. And don't forget, you know, we, we've done the parable of the sower so many times. And, you know, and I'm just, just, just to remind you, you know, that, you know, that there are four types of soil, you know, and each soil produces a result. All right. There's only one soil that produces a good result. But we've got to understand that each one of these soils, the seed was sown into. That's the important thing. Four types of soil, the wayside, the stony and shallow soil, um, the, the, the thorns and the, the bushes soil, and the good soil. But nice and simple, and, and we've done what they are. Wayside just gets taken away. The stony and shallow soil, um, quickly hear the word, it shoots up, and the sun comes, it withers because there's no root. In other words, they've got no strength to stay with it. And of course, the bushes and thorns is the, is the, is, is the cares and riches of the world, which we get more involved in and forget about God. And therefore, we lose, lose that faith that we had. And of course, there is good soil. So scripture. God gives us the natural to show the supernatural. So it's so important that we know, <laughs> we know there's some good soil somewhere. Some good soil somewhere, we gotta find it. And that's what it is, isn't it? It's finding it. And good soil doesn't come to us, we make it. You know, you're gardening, I, I was talking to somebody in the week, I said, yeah, every time I go into the garden, scriptures just flow through, it's just amazing, you know, and, you know, and, and how the plants grow and stuff like that, you know, and we get, we get good crops and things and good flowers, you know, but we've been, we've been composting and mulching this, this soil for years to produce even the natural good fruit. And that's what we do in our natural lives as well. You know, we've got to get people saved on the day, bit by bit, mulch it, feed it, keep going. Next time we meet them, just again, just, just you know, it, it doesn't have to be in a day. You, you, you're not to pressure yourself to get somebody saved. And um, the first time you speak to them, just bit by bit, and you'll know what you've said with said to them the last time, just bit by bit. So others fell on good ground and yielded a crop, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. So it's telling us, no matter what we feel and no matter what our results have been, hey, there is some, we just have to find it. So look around, hear the word of the Lord today. Look around you, your neighbors, your friends, your acquaintances, you know, and even the people you meet anywhere, people at the work, the lost, the hurting, the weak, the shopping, everywhere it's it's so much you know and wendy continues to try to tell us that you know there are places where people are really hurting and, and you just don't know anything about god as well we've got to find a way of of, of reaching um these people 
<laughs> of course. The most brilliant thing about God, you know, no matter what he tells us to do, he get, then gives us these, these other scriptures which are to inspire and to motivate and to create boldness and a different way of life in us and, you know, and, and, and a better vision and, and, you know, that faith to do the things that he wants. And that's why he gives us this. Romans 8, 31. If God is for us, who can be against us? We know what the battle is. It's a spiritual battle. We don't have to battle with people in the flesh. Once we know, we could be, you know, God will help us find that way. I'm going to read a few scriptures for you, but first, I'm just going to just encourage you towards the end of this because I know for some of you it's difficult and that's why I said please share with me let me help you let me come let me meet the people let's meet them in your house in a coffee shop let's just do something different and not what we're doing a bit out of Psalms 5 they're all those rejoice who put their trust in you let them forever shout for joy because you defend them. Let those who love your name be joyful in you. For you, O oh Lord, will bless the righteous. You see, that's it. That's for us. And it's so important. And you know, he tells us with favor, with favor, You're, you will surround us with a shield. And we live righteously. The Lord blesses us, lets us enable, shout for joy, and then surrounds us with a shield. A few Psalms for you, just to remind us of our wonderful God. Psalm 80, 14, return, we beseech you, O God of hosts. Look down from heaven and see and visit this vine of our church. Isn't that beautiful? 18. Revive us and we will call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord of hosts. Cause your face to, to shine upon us and we shall be saved. Turn away my eyes from looking at worthless things and revive me in your way revive me according to your loving kindness 